If a large asteroid is on a deadly collision with the Earth, the best thing is to do to nuke it. NASA's DART mission was to design to test out if hitting the asteroid can change the direction of an asteroid or meteorite. But do not nuke asteroids that are too close about to collide with us. The reason why that's because the nuclear explosion will shatter the asteroid into millions of smaller pieces that would still be headed for impact with us. Instead of dealing with just one giant asteroid, we would have to deal with the multiple impacts and it would make our evacuation really difficult or straight up impossible. Now you can still use a nuke to prevent an asteroid collision but you don't even have to strike the space rock. We just set off a nuke near the asteroid emphasis on nearer than the force from the blast would notch it and of course that would keep our planet safe. Hopefully, you know nuking the asteroid, of course, isn't the only one good thing we can do to our planet. Despite their unimaginably massive gravitational pull, black holes don't go sucking in everything in their way. It just doesn't work like that. Black holes are more like sinkholes. If you were to get too close to one, you would get lost to the darkness of this monster. But if you are far away from it, you would be safe. Even if Sun was replaced in the middle of the solar system by a black hole with the similar mass, all the planets would just orbit around like nothing happened, but things would get pretty dark though. And when we are talking about the planets, you probably assume that there is only one red planet in our solar system, but there are three other planets similar to Saturn. Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune all have their own sets of rings The most people don't know about them. We only learned about them when Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 flew past them in the past 1970s and 80s. Some scientists even think that, that Earth had ring at some point in its existence. 4.5 billion years ago, when a planet the size of Mars smashed into our young rock, it ejected so much debris that it likely briefly formed a small ring around Earth. Standing on Earth at night, you can see thousands of stars. But the view from the moon is actually quite boring. Astronauts who travel to the moon reported that stars are not easily visible from there because our moon is super reflective. It really cranks up the brightness, making it harder to see out to the stars. It's kind of like stargazing in a city with a lot of light pollution. You would need to travel further into space to get some better views. Also, traveling in space won't make you taller. It's true that astronauts can grow up to 5 centimeters in space. Well, that's because the Earth's gravity doesn't weigh them down and the vertebrae in their spines are able to expand a bit. But this effect is only temporary. As soon as you return to the Earth, you would get back to your regular height thanks to the gravity for that. And when we are talking about the darkness, the moon doesn't have a dark side. Our planetary partner gets hit by the sunlight all around. The reason why you don't see the other side of the moon is because it's always facing away from us. And of course, our moon rotates on its axis at the same rate. It orbits Earth, making it what's called tightly locked to our planet. Well, in future, humans will go to Mars. But on Mars, dust storms are a real headache. The dust particles are so fine that they can get anywhere. And these dust storms can last for months, but they can physically damage any equipment that we leave on the red planet. The thing is that the Martian atmosphere is super thin. Just about 1% of the atmosphere we have on Earth. So, even when these dust particles zoom around at about 100 km per hour, they can pack a big punch without the help of air. But what they can do is cover our solar panels and put our rovers into power saving hibernation. And for humans, inhaling the dust powder could damage your lung for long term. Also, space travel doesn't make your age slower either. Albert Einstein theorized that time would pass slower for, for someone traveling at a high speed versus for someone stationary. This is called time dilation. 
And while it's true, you would have to travel incredibly fast to achieve this de-aging effect, like almost the speed of light. With our current space traveling technology, the difference in time is so minimal that it's not even worth calculating. The Great Wall of China is also known to be the only man-made object that visible from space. But this is entirely false. Maybe you could see it with a camera or a zoom lens. But it's almost invisible to the naked eye. In 5 to 10 meters wide, the wall is way too thin to be seen from space. But however, you can still see plenty of other man-made objects from space. Things like down bridges and pyramids. And at night, you can see light show from the world big cities. If you thought crying in space was impossible, you were wrong. In space, it is just different. Without gravity to pull your teeth down, they don't tickle down your face like they do here on Earth. The tears just stick to your eyes and form a sort of water, watery blob. They might even cover your eyes if you cry a lot. It's best that you don't. Well, in night, sometimes you see the stars are twinkling. But let me tell you, the stars don't twinkle. The flickering is just an illusion. Stars appear to twinkle due to the gas molecules that make up our atmosphere. They deflect some of the light from stars, making them appear as if they are shimmering. Our asteroid belts are nothing like what you see in the movies. Asteroids are not that close together. In fact, they are extremely far apart. For example, in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars, each of the asteroids is several million kilometers away from their nearest neighbors. And the chances of the collision are about 1 in 1 billion. Space seeming incredibly cold. But actually, it's not. In reality, space doesn't have a temperature at all. Temperature is defined by the speed at which particle moves and move and the amount of energy they have in true vacuum of space. There are no particles to move around. That's why the vacuum is temperature less. Of course, our space isn't a perfect vacuum. It still has particles and radiations to produce heat. Some areas of space are actually really hot, like space around stars. But the further away you get from the stars, the more spread out the particles are, making these areas of space pretty chilly. Some dense gas clouds can get as cold as minus 263 degrees Celsius. Thanks to the movies and pop cultures, Another lie you have been told what happens when an astronaut is directly exposed to space without a space suit. If you are out on a spacewalk and your suit on your helmet or wrist, this would definitely be a bad news. Space is harsh to the human body and unless you could respond to the situation with lightning speed, you would probably die but rest assured, spontaneously explode. Earth is technically an obstacle and oblet spheroid. That means it's slightly flattened on the north and south poles, while it blocks out at the equator. How did it get away? Well, just imagine when the planet was forming. It was a bit a ball of clay as the spin the top and bottom get a bit squished down while the middle looks more bloated. The sun is hot, but it's not on fire, burning a chemical reaction of oxygen fuel like most stars out there. Our sun is a ball of gas, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. It doesn't have much oxygen in it, instead it works more like a gigantic nuclear reactor, constantly fusing hydrogen atoms to create helium inside its core. This process releases enormous amount of energy, and that's why the sun is so scorching hot. And that's not all. We have busted even more crazy space myths, like the sun being yellow. The sun is actually green, not yellow. For that video, check out this. And for such amazing videos, you can check out more videos from 
just imagine.